Um, well, let me start by thanking AFAR for organizing this and also uh, thank the audience for spending time with us. Um, so I'm charged to give a brief overview of COVID-19 and older adults' vulnerability to severe adverse outcomes. Um, so COVID-19 started uh, towards the end of 2019. So that's the name, uh, 19 there, uh, so in Wuhan, China. Uh, because of my deep connection with China, I have been in touch with my friends who are on the front, front line fighting this pandemic there since then, uh, almost on a daily basis. Now, COVID-19 has spread all over the world. Uh, on March 11th, the World Health Organization declared as a, as a global pandemic. And now WHO publishes uh, situation reports on its website and you know, you know, on a daily basis. So here is the one I downloaded last. Uh, I downloaded yesterday, number 63. Uh, as you can see, uh, there were more than 330,000 confirmed cases worldwide and over 14,000 um, 14, deaths. Now, if you uh, look at down here, you can you can actually you can actually track confirmed cases and deaths, uh, you know, in each state in the U.S. as well as around the world at Johns Hopkins Coronavirus Resource Center, uh, with the link provided here. Um, so, moreover, uh, COVID-19 has changed everybody's life. I mean, I don't need to tell you that so dramatically and in such a short period of time. Uh, on March 13th, uh, President Trump uh, declared a national emergency. Schools are closed and people cannot go to work. So what I show you here is a, a, a news clip. So the mayor of Baltimore, well, it's uh, Baltimore arguably is, it is the capital city of homicide in this country which I'm not you know, ob 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 obviously proud of. Uh, so backs, you know, people in the city to stop shooting each other so that we will have more hospital beds for, you know, for the patients. And then also here is a photo uh, taken last Friday um, on Palm Beach, Florida. You can still, uh, you can see a lot of people there. So what, we need to really observe, you know, social distancing, um, not only uh, for, you know, our self-protection, but also, you know, also for, uh, you know, not, not really spread, you know, spreading the virus to others, especially those who are vulnerable to severe diseases, including individuals with chronic conditions, and and particularly the large the large population of older adults. So that's why we are here today. So um, when you look at the older adult population, here is the data. Um, shows uh, uh, shows case facility uh, fatality among different age groups uh, in in January and in February uh, of this year in Hubei province uh, where Wuhan is located. Uh, it's, it was reported by, it, it, by China CDC. So as you can see, the risk for death uh, is, is, it's, it's very low for young kids and young adults. But then for older adults, you know, it really goes up, the, the, the risk for, for death, it, it goes up along you know, with age, and then with the highest up to 18% in those who are 80 years and older, which is the oldest, old subset of older adults. So now here's data from, from, from the, you know, you know, you know, if, from the uh, CEO, and then the, the figure on the left shows you as, as, as the whole, 
uh, 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 the whole continent, uh, you can see uh, the uh, you know percentage of you know uh, deaths among different age groups. Uh, and then the black bar is the confirmed cases, and then the red bar is the deaths. And then you can clearly see, uh, you know, the age-related uh, increase. So then the next one is a table uh, from a report just published by JAMA online uh, yesterday, uh, really comparing uh, case facility rate, uh, you know, uh, you know, actually case fatality rate by by different age groups uh, you know in Italy and China um, so what you can see again the numbers are you know different obviously between the two countries but then you know the pattern of the age related increase in case fatality is you know overwhelmingly consistent and as you may wonder why um, the overall case fertility fertility was higher in you know in Italy than in China, as you can see at the top, 7.2%, which is 2.3%. That is because the, the proportion of older adults in Italy is as twice as uh, much as, you know, that in China. So, you know, which is, I, I, I actually listed there. So can you go to the next slide? And now, what happened to our backyard, right? So, so we know the first outbreak, you know, was was in life care center, you know, which is a long-term care facility in Kirkland, Washington, and the next one, and then the first uh, death reported in New York, you know, was an 82-year-old in Brooklyn, and then the next one, and then the first uh, death reported in Maryland is uh, is also an 82-year-old, you know, in Howard County where I live. Now, can you go to the next slide? Uh, it, yeah, so this is a data, uh, data figure I got from the CDC uh, as of March 16th, uh, reported you know, by the MM, uh, um, MMWR. And then, uh, so this is uh, for the COVID-19 severe outcomes, the hospitalization rate, ICU admission rate, and then that's where we're, you know, are shown, you know, in different bars. And then I actually put all the older adults uh, in 65 and older, you know, in one figure. As you, as you can clearly see, uh, you know, all those outcome measures are significantly higher, you know, in the older adult population. And, you know, here, again, the pattern is really consistent. You know, I'm, uh, you know, although the numbers are very different, I mean, I'm sure it's going to change as the pandemic goes on. So can you show the next slide? And then um, what are the critical you know, features um, of this terrible disease? So we know aging, as I showed you the data, aging is the greatest risk for severe disease and death. And, uh, you know, it's, uh, perhaps immunosenescence may be a major mechanism, to, you know, for this risk. Um, I think Dr. George Kusho will, you, you know, tell you more about that. Now, um, this, you know, it's, it's actually on top of that, this disease has significant impact on the immune system, particularly on the aging immune system. So it seems the virus at the beginning or actually stimulates the you know airway you know the airway you know the epithelial to, you know to produce a lot of cytokines, uh, which leads to the cytokine storm. Uh, you know, cytokine storm we know it's a uh, pathogenic factor for severe disease like you know, sepsis. And now the virus also actually seems to kill the T cells, uh, so CD4 and uh, CD8 T cells. Uh, in matter of fact, lymphopenia, which is uh, a matter at the day uh, four to six after this onset, is a quite uh, you know, reliable you know, pro prognostic factor for poor outcomes. So this is based on the experience uh, from Wuhan, um, as well as the initial experience in 
in our ICU at Johns Hopkins Hospital. So you know, some of my friends on the front line even consider you know, COVID-19 a SARS, uh, actually plus HIV, because of its significant impact on the immunity. Now, another feature of this disease is lung damage, you know, lung damage and fibrosis early on. So that's why CT scan shows, you know, characteristics ground grass precipitation. Uh, so at the as the disease goes on, actually the multi organ failure is the is the major cause of you know death for most of the patients. Uh, in a matter of fact, the virus was no longer you know detectable in those late. Uh, phase anymore. So really, in other words, it's our body, you know, fa our body's failure to handle the virus. So uh, John, can you go next? Okay, can you go next? Right, so, so, so that of all these clinical features, particularly aging as the greatest risk factor for severe disease, you know, really made us to rethink the the traditional paradigm. So, which you know, which focused only on on the individual pathogens or or diseases. And and as you know, uh, you know, pathogens you know can change. So even you know, even even the coronavirus family alone. I mean, we had uh, SARS. MERS, now COVID-19. So if we only uh, go after the pathogens, we're, you know, we're not going you know, to get, uh, we're not going to get very far. So that's why we needed to, uh, you know, think about it, you know, other approach. I mean, that's the, that's the general science approach. And then this is really important because the general science approach really addresses healthy aging, you know uh, the, the the host factors, and then uh, you know older adults' ability to handle and to fight against infections and other chronic diseases. So, can you go to the next slide? Now, um, you know, general science approach. You know, we cannot do it uh, alone by ourselves in the U.S. Uh, and then we also, you know, need the, the collaboration. Uh, among the academic institutions, uh, you know, the government, uh, as well as the foundations, uh, and 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 also private sectors. So here shows uh, our initial, uh, you know, effort for the international collaboration. So it shows you the first international zero science symposium held last year, you know, in China, and. And I would like to take the, uh, like to take this opportunity again to thank AFAR, you know, for its, uh, you know, for its support as well as the NIA Nation Shop Center and the Mills and Medical Asian American Partnership Foundation. Um, thank you. <laughs>